This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? Leave a rating, please, and a brief written review. If you would do that, it would be very, very helpful. I wanted to talk to you today about the fact that you are the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer. You're the Chief Operating Officer. For all practical purposes, you're the Chief Financial Officer for yourself, or as someone has said, for the University of You. Now, you're listening and you're thinking, I I am a person who's under orders. I work for someone. I answer to my boss, my supervisor, but my friends never, ever underestimate that you are in charge of yourself. You really, really are. If we're going to get better, if we're going to improve, if we're going to seek to make a difference in our family, in our own lives, in the lives of people we love, where we work, Whether you're a business owner or you're an employee makes no difference. If things are going to happen in your life, it is up to you. It is not your mama. It's not the government. It's not your spouse. It's not your kids, your grandkids. It's not even your best friend's responsibility. If it's going to be, it's up to you. If things are going to happen, you are the one Who's going to make it happen? Far too long, too many people have sat on the sidelines of life waiting for a lucky break, waiting for the stars to align, waiting for someone to come along and tap them on the shoulder and say, have I got a deal for you? Wake up. It's not going to happen. If there are going to be changes in your life, they will be implemented by you. Well, let's just talk for a moment about being the chief executive officer of your own life. This is what I think we we really need to come to understand to help shake some of us out of the lethargy that has overtaken us or the sense that we feel trapped. A lot of people are, are developing what they're called side jobs, side hustles, gig, the gig economy. Um, I would advise, like a lot of other folks do, you might want to try that while you still have the safety net, for a while anyway, uh, of a job or a position, just to see if this is not just a way to supplement your income, but for uh, maybe in the future, a way to actually replace your income. I think this last downturn has shown us that we're going to have to uh, do our due diligence in making sure that we provide for ourselves, our families, and do the things that are necessary. We can't just wait for the government, for our employer, for the charities to come through and to help us. So you hear some talk about it. What does it in actuality mean to be the chief executive officer, the CEO of yourself? Well, first of all, it starts with a vision. Every company has a vision. Every place you've ever worked, whether they really implemented it or not, or even sought to implement it, whether it was anything more than something printed on placards or just a a nice little statement to repeat at annual meeting, the fact of it is they understand there needs to be a vision, there needs to be a mission, there needs to be a purpose in our uh, corporation, in our business. Well, let's take this down to where you and I live. What is your vision? What would you like to see happen in and through your life? What is your vision and dreams not only for yourself, but your family and loved ones? What's your vision for yourself spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, financially, uh, in relationship to your health? What is the preferred future that you envision that you need to happen in your life? Get up off the sofa and start thinking, what do I really want to do? What needs to happen in my life and my family's life for things to be going in a more positive 
and a better direction. You can't go to the library or to a local bookstore or even listen to a podcast or read a blog article and say, there it is, there is my vision. Now, there are certainly people who can coach us and encourage us and challenge us, but the vision for you has to come from you. If you're a person of faith, it would really start with praying. It would really start with then evaluating what, what are the gifts and talents and opportunities that have been placed at my disposal. Now, I know that whenever you hear this, there are some of you are saying, uh, you don't understand, Dr. Ron, I, I can't do anything. Well, first of all, I don't believe that. You have a unique reason for being here. Get a vision of what it is you're supposed to be about and what you need to do. That's the very first thing that you absolutely have to have that's absolutely indispensable as you become the CEO of yourself. The second of eight things that I want to talk about is you have to translate that to action. Just as many corporations and businesses fail because they bring in uh, someone to help them, they bring consultants in to help them develop a vision and a mission statement, and they go through all sorts of exercises, lots of writing and distilling of what everyone thinks, and then it's laid aside never ever looked at again. Out of your vision of what you think you need to be, where you would like to go, you have to start coming up with an action plan. A vision does not just accomplish itself. There are very few visions that are in and of themselves so motivating that they just happen automatically. There are action steps that absolutely are indispensable and must happen in order to move the vision forward. Take whatever area of your life you want to get control of, you want to improve in, you're going to have to take action steps. Your finances will not improve if you don't take the proper action. Your health will not improve if you don't take the proper action. Your intellectual or knowledge goals will not get better unless you take action. And actions come in all sizes and shapes. And so if your vision touches on all of the things that I've just mentioned, then get get alone. Uh, you can do it electronically. I think there's some magic that happens between a pen and the piece of paper, your hand and your mind and heart. But write down the actions that are going to be needed in order for you to improve yourself and all of the various areas, spiritually, intellectually, relationally, emotionally, financially and on on and on it goes but if you're the CEO of yourself you're going to have to start taking the actions that improve you and get you to where you need to be the third thing I would say in regard to this idea of you are the CEO of yourself is you are in charge now as a person of faith I understand that God is in charge I am saying this in relationship to to the fact that I've met a lot of people down through the years that everything that seemingly has ever happened in their life is someone else's fault. This person cut me off in traffic. That person was married to the boss's cousin and they got the promotion. That the pastor liked that person better than he liked me. These persons went to the same university, therefore they were favored over me, and at the last minute, I lost out on the job promotion. Let me give you two words. Stop it. Quit being a victim. You are in charge. Take responsibility for yourself, your actions, and all that you do. Get over whatever it is and remember you are in charge. Everything starts with you, your attitude, and then finding corresponding actions in which to take. Quit being the victim. You have more power and more responsibility than you're letting on today. So remember, you're in charge, which leads me to number four. Fourth thing you need to do if you're going to be the CEO of yourself, and that is plan your day. Now, I already hear what some of you are saying. 
You don't understand. I work from some more, someone else. I have to put in X amount of hours and I don't get to pick and choose. Rarely does anyone, even the self-employed, get to pick and choose what they do every hour of their life. Many things are already dictated for persons like that. But here's what you need to do. Get up early. Start planning your day. What are the baby steps? What are the actions that you need to take in order to fulfill your vision? What are the actions? Remember, you're in charge. Start making plans on taking those actions. Yes, it would have been great to have started all of these things 20 years ago. That's true. But the second best time to start these things is today, this very day. Get a planner, get a journal, start planning out how you are going to block time out and you're going to begin taking the proper actions that over time will grow great results and lead you toward the vision you have for yourself. Now, number five, I'm just going to throw in as a bonus, and that is smile. A lot of times people don't feel good. They, they feel bad about themselves. They're not happy with where they are. One of the ways that you can begin to make appreciable change in your life is practicing smile, smiling. And some of us are so bad at it, you need to almost go right now and stand in front of a mirror and practice smiling. A smile makes a world of difference. So why don't you try? You will feel better, and everyone that meets you today will feel better if you greet them with a smile. The sixth thing that you're going to have to take responsibility for and begin doing if you're going to be the CEO of your own life is you're going to have to develop a personal development program. What positive books are you going to read? What seminars are you going to participate in? Are there some webinars that you want to um, be a part of so you can learn something? What things are you going to do as the CEO of yourself to take responsibility and to begin to develop yourself? The seventh thing that I would say as being the CEO of yourself is, why don't you put a board together of people who you trust, people you can count on, people that will help you to develop and become the person that you need to be. It can be friends. Just say, hey, would you give me some feedback? Now, I'm not saying you have to put together a, a real board and have a chairman and a secretary and a treasurer. I'm just saying we are all better when we are surrounded by people and some of the best ideas that any of us have we were given from were given to us by someone else. So don't isolate yourself. Isolation rarely leads to anything good unless we are self-isolating uh, for a time to recharge our batteries. But we, we need people around us. And the eighth one is frankly this. You just need to get up and get moving. You've dreamed about it. You've thought about it. You've talked about it. You've discussed it. You've rediscussed it. You've cussed it. You've just talked, 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 talked. Make up your mind that today is the day you're going to take action and you're going to get moving and you're going to begin implementing these things in your life because it's not someone else's responsibility. It's not someone else's job. You, my friend, my leadership friend, are in charge of you and today I want to give you a new title. You are a CEO, a Chief Executive Officer of the of the incorporation of you. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this has been like a vitamin or supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom? Please leave a rating and a brief written review. It will be so helpful in enabling others to find this podcast. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day.